Today we're going to work on setting up an exercise routine for your kiddo or student with autism. The first things we want to do is make sure that it's structured. The kids can see exactly what we're doing. So today we're going to run, we're going to warm up and run. We are going to stretch and then we're going to play. So your kiddo knows these are the three things we're going to do. And when we're finished, we just fold them over so they know that they're done. So the first thing we're going to do is warm up. Hopefully you have four objects that you can gather together sort of in the center of the room. Something soft is probably the best because it's the safest. And all you're gonna do is have your student or child walk around the pillows. Eventually what you're going to do, once your kiddo gets used to this, is start pulling the four pieces apart. So you're making a bigger circle, you're getting more gross motor, and you're getting your kiddo to understand this is the routine. One other thing you can do is as they finish one lap, you can have something set up so they know that they're done. So it could be as simple as buttons. So they come by, I pick up my one button, and I know I only have one more lap to go. Another thing you can do is set up something like a puzzle, and they come by, they do one piece of the puzzle, they start to run around again. <laughs> Flip it over and say, we are finished. Now it's time for stretching. But you want some kind of a marker for the kids so they know this is where we do our stretches. So it might be a living room rug, it might be a mat. You have to move the pillows and the things out of the way. Have your kiddo do it. Have them pick it up and give it a toss. Have them give it a kick, step and follow through. Find your space and we're going to do three exercises. Keep it simple. Let's do arm circles. And you should count with your kiddo and say we're going to do it ten times. Next one we're going to do is just simple twists. So you're holding your fist here and you're just going to twist. Arches, so bringing your knees up. It's nice for balancing on one foot. So once you're finished, you point to stretches. Stretches are finished. The cool thing about this is you can have your kiddo do it too. You don't necessarily have to do it every time. Having them do it gives them ownership over it. So it's important to remember that. Last thing is playing. So this is a big one because I want to help teach you how to engage your kiddo with autism into reciprocal play because that can be super tough. Typically kiddos with autism don't want to make eye contact, they want to play by themselves, they want that script running in their head of Elmo or whatever their favorite thing is and they, and they don't want to come out of that shell. So I have a really cool game now to show you to help kind of keep that flow of play going. So you are going to sit down with your kiddo, you can use the pillows that you used um, for the laps or any kind of ramp, so it could be a piece of cardboard, paper towel roll that you could use like a tunnel, um, whatever you have. For this activity you're going to take the card and you're going to roll it down a pillow. And at the same time, you or your kiddo is going to roll, or your student, is going to roll their car down the pillow. Ready, set, go. And then we're going to switch. So I'm going to grab his and he's going to grab mine. You can give them the cue, ready, set, go. If one of the kiddos is verbal, you can have them do it and have ownership in that way. The other thing you can do in the center is create any kind of castle or something that they can knock down so that it gets a little bit more exciting. So the flow of the game going and keep your kids excited and interested. If there is just a preferred object that they really love, have them use that at first. It's not going to last very long. It's probably only going to be, you know, 30 seconds to a minute, depending on your kiddo and how much they enjoy playing but it's important to continue to practice this every day so the running the stretching and then the gameplay and the gameplay can get changed up the stretches can get changed up and the running in the circle can also be changed you could go a different direction you can use a different locomotor skill but keeping the structure the same is really important so that students know what to expect and that way when they get to gameplay they know oh I'm supposed to sit here across from my friend or my family and really engage meaningfully in that play if you have any questions or comments please leave them below um, please subscribe then I know Know that you like these videos and I can make some more with some more fun games and I hope you enjoy it. Now depending on who it is that you're teaching you may want to change up the exercises so that it is engaging and fun for that participant. So they might not want to do the arm circles you might want to come up with something exciting and new and fresh for them. Every person is different whether diagnosed with a disability or not. So make sure you're thinking about the unique needs of each participant during this exercise routine.